This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by WD-40. To see their entire product line, visit WD-40.com. What's up guys, welcome back to the Fab Forms. So the plans for today is to work on the Bibster, do the turbo setup on that thing, or at least start it. But first, a couple new arrivals. So I got this one, and I got something outside as well. Uh, I'm gonna kinda touch on them. I'm gonna do a, well I'm gonna probably do a ton of videos on this thing, but I will do a video of the story behind this truck in depth to kind of introduce you guys to this truck uh, in another video. So I mentioned I had a C10 coming. And well, this is it. It is a 1980 uh, step side, obviously. And um, pretty, pretty much all original. So the basic story on this truck is that this is a California truck. I actually had it shipped out here from California. This truck has been in my family, well, almost my entire life. Um, I remember this truck as a kid. I fell out of the back of this thing. I remember when they etched the glass on it. I mean, I just have a lot of memories wrapped up in this truck. My grandma's had it the entire time and she talked about selling it a while back and I just couldn't fathom, I couldn't, I couldn't, it hurt my heart to think that this truck was gonna be in somebody else's life, just some random person's life. And so I told her I wanted it. I want to buy it. I want, I want that truck. So I got it. You can see some of the itching on the glass. So like I said, I'll talk about that in another video. I do want to come up with a name for it though. And that's where I always come to you guys. I don't know. Cali, Cali C10, Cali Custom. I think my grandma called it Big Red. There's already a Big Red though, so I gotta come up with something else. So if you have a name for that truck, let me know. I don't really know what the plans are right now on that thing. Actually, I know what the plans are right now is to leave it just like it is. Fix some of the little stuff, some of the little, you know, tiny things, new door panels, new carpet, kind of maybe some of the gauge stuff, but uh, no big plans right now. Obviously I got a bunch of projects on my plate already. I wanna get those finished or really close to finished and then I'll dress that thing. So the other, the other new arrival, I bought another Mustang. I know what you're thinking, why on earth would you buy another Mustang? And it's not even a coupe, right? So basically it's just a parts car. There's some things that I needed for the Bibster to kind of finish it. Uh, versus, you know, instead of going out and trying to find those parts and then buying them, it just ended up, it was gonna be easier to buy an entire car that had those parts on it that I wanted. Some of those parts were like some aluminum cylinder heads. I also need a little bit of the sheet metal. There was a couple of things I needed to buy and for the cost just to buy them, I could pretty much buy this car. I'm gonna part it out. So if you are anywhere in the upstate or near the upstate, of South Carolina and you need anything that you think might be on this car, let me know. The short block's pretty fresh, according to the guy that I got it from. So I'm gonna sell that, I'm gonna sell the T5 probably. Uh, initially I was gonna keep it as a spare, but I probably end up selling it. It's got a good rear end with good axles. I believe they're like Mosier axles, 8.8. .8. Um, it's got that Elbrock intake that you've seen, some injectors, a mass air meter. Got some odds and ends. Odds and ends. It's got some random interior pieces that might be worth something. So anyway, making deals, making deals up here in South Carolina. If you need this car, call me, write me, shoot me an email, hit me up on Instagram, whatever. If you need something, let me know. I'm just gonna blow it out. Super cheap. 
a door. We want a door, need a door, quarter window, some driver window, front windshield, a sunroof. If you want the whole thing, I'll sell you the whole thing as a roller. Come get it. If you do scrap. Anyway, if you need anything off that, let me know. Shop progress. Touch on that later as well. All right, let's uh, let's do some bibstro work. Here's the plan. So I've got these plates. I've got a bunch of these plates left over from, well, I don't know where I got them, to be honest with you. A little bit rusted. I threw them in a WD-40 rust remover soak bath. Kind of cleaned them up. And then what I'm doing is I've actually marked for the bolt holes on the cylinder heads themselves. I'm making two cylinder head plates. And then off of these, I'm gonna use some one inch Chromoly kind of make a support for that turbo. It's going to go down and kind of tie into that turbo. In the past, I had it kind of mounted down on the frame rail. I didn't really like that because the frame rail uh, is more likely to move independently of the engine itself. I'd rather it be attached to the engine and then the exhaust tubing as well, all that attached. The other good thing is if I want to take the motor and trans out, which is really how uh, that stuff needs to be serviced in this vehicle. Nothing can come out the bottom the way that I designed it. I can just unbolt motor mounts and bolt the transmission mount and turbo headers, the whole hot side, motor, everything can all come out in one big piece, right? I can kind of set it on the ground, do whatever I need to do, and then it can all go back in. This rust remover soak from WD-40 is awesome. It's, um, it's not an acid, which is what you typically find in these. This stuff is safe, it's biodegradable, it's not gonna burn your hands. And you know, if you wash this stuff off, it's non-toxic, it's not gonna affect anything. How it works, I don't really know, but it works, works well. So I think these, so these plates, I think I had them sitting in there maybe 15, 20 minutes. And that's, that's how clean they got, just in that short amount of time. The WD-40 Rust Remover Soak is part of their specialist line. Now I want to get these finished, kind of get the holes drilled in this set. I've already got the other one done. Get those mounted, start routing some of that tubing, and then I can actually cut off the old mounts, turbo mounts that go down to the chassis, and hopefully there's enough strength and everything else. Once that's done, then I can start routing tubing.
All right, so I think that's it on the turbo mounts. So what I'll end up doing is I'll probably end up cutting this loose down here. Maybe put like a gusset in there before I do it. So it'll be a gusset here and then you got these two bars coming together. This chrome molly is not very flexible, so it should be very durable. As long as it doesn't crack on me, I think I'll be okay. There will be turbo exhaust and stuff as well that's gonna support it just a little bit, but you know, you don't wanna put any strain on that as well. You kinda want the chrome molly, the tubing to hold the turbo weight. You know, even going over big bumps and stuff. So hopefully that'll get me. Things looking pretty wild, kinda has that predator style look to it, all this tubing and whatnot. I think it definitely fits the theme of the car, so I'm pretty stoked about it. Next episode, we start putting the tubing in. And yeah, we'll blow it all apart, weld everything up. Then the motor comes out. All right guys, that's all I got for you this week. As always, thank you for joining me. Go do work, son.